people who speak up when there is something unjust happening, people who would take to the streets when dissatisfied with policymaking and governmental actions. Very recently, people in Hong Kong took to the streets and gave an outlet to the disagreement with the planned governmental bill. Our next speaker, and the last one for this session, is one of them. He's among many things, an avid activist and an artist. Here to tell you more about the protests from his street view. Please welcome on stage, with a big round of applause, Casey Wong. My city is dying. It is at war with a much more powerful force than ours. It's a war on culture. If we win this war, our prize will be humble. We'll get to keep our language, our way of life. But if we lose, then everything change. I'm just an artist. What can I do? Use my art to fight the war? I want to join the resistance somewhere but I couldn't find them. So I become the resistance. Everything is art, everything is politics. The great Chinese artist Ai Weiwei once said, I don't think it's the responsibility of an artist to put politics in their subject matter, but as a citizen, I think it's important to stand up for justice when politics gone bad. So from the Umbrella Movement five years ago to the current anti-extradition law movement, I slowly realize my duty, responsibility, and role. I'm not only an artist, I'm an artist citizen. My story began five years ago during the Umbrella Movement, which is about fighting for our universal suffrage rights in Hong Kong. I was wandering about in the umbrella uh, Occupy zone in, Centra, in Art Moti, and then I noticed there was a guy lying on the pavement, and he looked exhausted, and he, was, he fell to sleep. I, at first, I thought he's a homeless guy, and then I noticed there was signage in front of him made of cardboard. It reads, Free English Tutorial. Wow. He's a teacher. He's a teacher like me. I was so impressed by these scenes, and I start to ask myself, what can I offer? I think under political polarization, the society would be full of high mental stress. I've seen friends unfriend each other, husband turning against wife, father turning against sons. So I created this project called the Art Study Station. And I have all the subject matters that I know, design, art, architecture, performance, laying in front of me. On the outside, it looks like an art tutorial group. But actually, it is a psychological counseling service in disguise. This project was partly inspired by Sigmund Freud, who happens to have an office here in Vienna a long time ago. Now it's a museum you can visit after the talk. So, I don't have a sofa on the street, but I have the folding chairs there, and I invite the protesters to come have a session with me, free of charge. And I'll play the Sigmund Freud thing. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Like that. So they dump all their negative energies on me. In the meantime, I give out a lot of empathy, support, and love. Maybe under political polarization, all we need is someone to listen to our inner voice. So one day, this old man showed up, and he was sharing his life story with me, and suddenly he pulled out some pills from his pocket and raised it up to the sky, and he said, if they send in the tanks, I'll be the first to block it. I'm not afraid of dying. 
I'm just afraid of dying without a purpose. Pretty dramatic, you can imagine. Another night, I was there feeling very hungry. Suddenly, an apple appeared. I looked up, this little girl handing out apples to, this, to the protesters, and behind her were the parents pushing the trolley of a, a, full, a box of apples to be distributed. Another night, it was very cold, and a housewife showed up, pushing a trolley with a kitchen pot on top of it. Very surreal. And she asked me, would you like some hot soup? I was like, hell yes, please. That was the tastiest soup I've ever tasted. So remember, it's always the little things that count. There are countless examples of everybody who can contribute to the cause. Maybe charging mobile phones, constructing shelters, or just simply distribution of supplies. The most important lesson I learned from the Umbrella Movement is everyone can contribute, and everyone has a role. Just think about the resource that you're bringing into the cause. I'm not afraid of dying. I'm afraid of dying without purpose. So, once you find your purpose, then you will have no fear. After a decade of putting my artwork at the front line of protest, I slowly developed this uh, art theory. I call it the five points of protest art. Time to take out those notebooks. Big, light, easy, artistic, fast. In acronym is Big Leaf, B-L-E-A-F. Big stands for big in volume. There are so many people in the street protests. The last one I went to involved two million people. In, this, in that situation, you're not going to see very far, mostly the back of the guy standing in front of you. And uh, if you make a signage that is so small, no one's going to see it. So whatever you do, make sure it's big. Bigger than life kind of big, way above everybody's head, so people can see it far, far away. Light, it stands for lightweight. Imagine you're carrying a big cross on your back, and it's made of solid wood, OK? And you're walking spectacle. Everybody loves you and looking at you but you're not going to go very far. So people go to the protest because they want to punish the enemy, but you don't want to end up punishing yourself. So whatever you do, maybe put some wheels under the props or build it out of lightweight material. This way you don't have to carry anything. Just push your happy protesting trolley to the end of the finish line. Easy stands for easy to understand. Exhibiting in the protest site is very different than exhibiting in museum or gallery. People who go to museum and gallery already are looking for art. In the protest site, they are all accidental viewers. If you make something too difficult to understand, no one get it, and your message will literally be lost in the crowd. So try to tune down your work a bit. Make sure it can be understood in a few seconds, so your message communicates well with everybody. Oh, by the way, that guy looks like a Chinese uh, police. That's me. Artistic. Oh, this is deep. Aesthetic, craftsmanship, and meaning. There are many attributes in the word artistic. Maybe form, maybe craftsmanship, color, material. But I think most importantly, the meaning. I think it's human nature to like to look at beautiful, well-crafted things. They demand attention appreciation, and respect. And when the protesters see somebody who are willing to spend the time crafting something beautiful for their cause, they feel like their cause is being taken seriously. And it will capture the attention of everyone, especially the press. So that's me doing a sketch of the protesters. One day I was walking around, I saw a poster. There's a quote on it. It's by Nelson Mandela. It's like, it always seems impossible until it's done. I was like, wow, it's like us, you know, occupying here. And then I asked myself, do I have some like, seemingly impossible skills that I have? And then I realized I can draw people's face without looking at the drawing paper and talk to them, and all done within 35 seconds. 
wow, that's called blind drawing. And there you go. So I go around and ask people, would you like some free portrait? And then I draw them and talk to them and ask them how they feel. I can draw like this without looking at the paper. If you want one, I'll be outside. <laughs> I have done thousands of these kind of sketches. After I finish, I give it to the protesters as a souvenir of their courage. They didn't chicken out. They came out. And that's the test. That's the testimony of it. FAST stands for Fast Dissemination, Sharing, Go Viral. So during the Umbrella Movement five years ago, there was a big storm coming. I was so worried for the students because their camp just kind of put on the slope on the highway and they would get washed away. I used to do research with the homeless people in Hong Kong and I learned how to build the perfect urban shelter from them. They're expert in this. They told me, first, you get some pallets and then you get some mattress. Put the mattress on top of the pallet, build your camp on top of that and make sure the whole thing is built underneath a flyover. I was like, wow, let's do that. So I make a little sketch and post it on my uh, own Facebook, and it got 2,256 shares immediately. Two days later, some guy, maybe great minds think alike, drop a pile of pallets on the Occupy Zone so everybody can use it. Never underestimate the power of the individual. Go share it. You might change it. I actually look like this. <laughs> Empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. You put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into the bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put water into a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. That's not me. That's Bruce Lee. <laughs> Thank you. So I was wondering, how, I, how can I become formless and shapeless in a protest? You put people into the street, it becomes the street. So after the July 21st police uh, an allegedly gangster collaborated terrorist style attack on the protesters, uh, on, the, on this photograph, the people wearing white t-shirts, they're gangsters, and the people wearing black t-shirts is actually pro-democracy protesters. And you know, that guy got beaten up pretty badly there. So this is how I look. I'm old school gangster, straight from the 1970s. Uh, the project is called Choi Go, or Brother Choi. Long hair, sunglasses, armpit bag. <laughs> so this is seven days after the, uh, the attack in Yunlong, and I'm there at the front line observing the situation. Nobody dare to come challenge me. <laughs> Why? Because I have the look of violence written all over me. You know, not even the police, because they might think I'm one of their accomplices. I'm working for them. <laughs> Right now, Hong Kong is going through a stage of, from a traditional civil disobedience all the way to the uncivil disobedience. Within the civil disobedience way of thinking, you know, we break the rule and we wait and wait for the police to address us, and then uh, it, that way we honor the law. In the uncivil, way of, uh, uncivil disobedience way of thinking, the law is so unjust, like the... Uh, anti-extradition law, which is about sending people of Hong Kong into China for unjust trial, or the recently passed anti-mask law that, you know, you can wear a face mask. So why follow it? Just break it. And then flow away like water. So this way is not really about breaking the law, but rather is about honoring the just law that we believed in. So as violence go about on both sides, police violence as well as protester violence, hiding one's identity and disguising oneself becomes more and more important. It's like tactical. So, oh, by the way, this is not me. 
Uh, this is uh, actually a preacher trying to block a real police pistol in order to protect the students. What a noble thing he did. That's a real gun. I have many disguises involve cosplay and uh, you know, looking not myself. And this is me in the most violent form of police, the special tactical unit, STU. But I change it to SSTU, which stands for Special Singing Tactical Unit. <laughs> Let's uh, look at the video, if we can. Do we have sound? No. Like that. Thank you. I hope you can uh, uh, read the subtitle. So that's me happily singing with the protesters, dressing like the most brutal police. This work was inspired by the Baltic Way 30 years ago from Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. The Hong Kong people, people were doing the Hong Kong human chain. So art maybe is about singing and dancing. And in the process, we become one big strong solidarity. Oh, that's me again. As Leonidas the first from the movie 300, uh, minus the six packs, of course. <laughs> that day, so many young protesters come up to me and praise me of how handsome I look. But notice, I didn't have to show my face. I have no face, I only have a helmet. So when they come up to me, I'll say, For Sparta, tonight we die in hell. That's me again, uh, holding on to my principle, sorry about the finger. Maybe art is about rediscovering the courage inside of our heart that is buried deep under fear. Oh, that's me again, as Moses, holding the five commandments, and it was caught on TV. Let's see if uh, the video worked properly. Let's go to the video, please. And then people are yelling, Hong Kong, add oil, Hong Kong, add oil. Today, I bought with me the five commandments for the people of Hong Kong. <laughs> the five commandments. First, withdraw the China extradition bill. Second, revoke the rioting terminology. <laughs> Third, drop all charges on protesters. And fourth, set up independent commission of inquiry. And finally, the fifth, true democracy for the people of Hong Kong. Why are you coming out? <laughs> God sent me. <laughs> What's the meaning of you dressing up like this? You look like a shepherd. What's that supposed to mean? Today, my name is Moses. I come here to lead the people of Hong Kong into freedom and democracy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> My city is dying, but I didn't just stand on the sideline and watch. I fight and I resist with all I do, what I do best in art. With the understanding of my responsibility as an artist citizen, you don't have to be an artist to do what I do. You can just do what you do best. Remember the little girl distributing apple? The little girl citizen. Remember the housewife distributing hot soup? The housewife citizen. And remember the teacher on the sidewalk trying to give out free English lesson? The teacher citizen. My city is dying. Democracy is failing. Personal freedom at last. My story is not a local story, but the first chapter of dystopia that might be coming your way. The enemy will not be of a foreign face, but a familiar face 
that act foreign. Abusive centralized government, invasion of privacy, violent police, re-educational concentration camps. Totalitarian government can be formless and shapeless too. I have a dream. One day, all the protesters, or even the police, will come and take out the disguise and weapons, and we're going to all meet up underneath the Hong Kong Legislative Council building and throw a gigantic reconciliation party. We'll be drinking and laughing and dancing, cracking jokes about our great endeavors during the protests. But the funny thing is, we might not be able to recognize each other, but that doesn't matter. We were there, we know. I have a dream, but that dream might not be able to realize soon. There's a quote from Umbrella Movement I like a lot. It is not that we have seen hope, then we become persistence. It is of our persistence, then it will bring hope. Fight for freedom. May glory to Hong Kong. It's about time. Thank you. Now we still recognize you. Yeah. Oh, you still recognize me? Oh, no. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. The applause doesn't want to stop. Casey, thank you so much for your thank talk. You, thank, you. thank you for what you're doing. And uh, we're a bit behind time, so it's okay. going to be very short. Just my question to you, make glory to Hong Kong. What does that mean? It's actually a song the protester wrote. Um, someone thinks it's like the new uh, anthem of Hong Kong. and. Uh, this is a kind of testimony of how art and uh, social movement can become one. Wow. And, when, and you have seen, if you go to the video and you can watch that song, May Glory to Hong Kong, people would sing it. And when they sing it, they do this, which, uh, which is very good because your emotion comes out when you hear the music. And the, the lyrics is about our, our struggle and also you know, this kind of um, hope that uh, everyone has. Well, Casey, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.